What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm pumped to bring you our latest remastered build for Skyrim, and this is one of our classic lore-rich builds. We've fleshed out the backstory to really help you get in the head of the character, and along with that, we have an all new skill and various new perks to enhance the playstyle. This is the Kirilth, and if you're wondering what Kirilth means, Kirilth is the name of a notorious vampire clan in the overgrown province of Valenwood. These vampires blend themselves in with the mists which roll ominously into popular towns and villages. What at first appears to be a spot of bad weather is actually a band of ethereal blood-sucking beasts, using the haze to disguise their attacks. Sound cool? Well the Kirilf is our newest vampire build, and he is pure evil. Vampires you've seen in your past adventures seem tame in comparison to the Kirilf. Remaining unseen, the Kirilf kills in gruesome fashion, feasting on the flesh of the dead before reanimating them, interrupting their eternal slumber to force them to fight on behalf of the monster who just killed them. This build is a living legend, a horrific nightmare to the common folk of Skyrim. So keep that in mind when you roll into the province as a mysterious mist, taking your enemies to the grave and eating your fill. Before we get into the build, don't forget forget that timestamps can be found in the description just below to help you find your way around the video. But with that said, let's start things off with Kirilf's race, standing stone and stats. The Kirilf is a wood elf, which means he can use his command animal ability to make an animal an ally for 60 seconds. He also has a 50% resistance to poison and disease. Also, his Bosma blood gives him a plus 5 boost to light armor and sneak. Early on, use the Lover Stone to help you level your various skills from each skill category. Once leveling is out of the way, switch to the Ritual Stone as it allows the Kirilf to raise all nearby dead enemies to fight for you for 60 seconds once a day. This is handy and great for roleplaying. If you'd like to, you can use the Atronarch Stone for more protection against magic but we'll leave that up to you. The Kirill stat spread will be 50% health to keep him alive in his light armor and 50% magicka for the heavy casting playstyle. No stamina will be needed due to the light armor perk which gives you a 50% increase to stamina regen. The Kirill was born in a small village southwest of Arenthia in the province of Valenwood. It was the kind of small tight-knit community where everybody knew everybody and there really was no such thing as a private affair. The Kirill was the town's mage and while he didn't consider himself particularly skilled in magic, he was the only one with any understanding whatsoever. The majority of the townsfolk were never lucky enough to receive a proper education. They were mostly hunters, gatherers and cooks. As a result of their education, the Kirilf didn't make very much money trading resources for loans of his many collected tomes. Often he was forced to try more unconventional means of making a living. He'd read of the Bosmeri spinners, who used illusion magic when telling stories to spin tales with magic, making them infinitely more engrossing and coming alive in the listeners' minds. He wasn't even sure whether he was particularly good at it, as the majority of the folks who gathered at the local tavern simply enjoyed listening to the most literate man in the town. Not that that was much of an achievement, mind you. Nevertheless, the Kirilp enjoyed his role in the small town. He had all the books he could ever read in his shop, and spinning stories at the inn gave him warm meals and a chance to stay totally in the know with the goings-on in the community. One day, as he was heading to the tavern to tell a haunting story about the dreaded were-vultures found feasting on the flesh of carrion deep in the darkest reaches of Valenwood's forests, the Kirilf noticed a man standing in his usual spot, speaking with intense emotion to a crowd of distraught townspeople. It was one of the local hunters from the edge of town. After listening closer, he realised that the hunter was telling no story. There had been an ominous mist looming over the town the past few days, which the Kirilf had attributed to bad weather. But this elf was claiming that his son wandered too deep into the thick haze and had been entirely engulfed by it. The Kirilf couldn't help but think this fool had just been a lousy parent, but it did seem odd that a hunter couldn't track his own son. Hunters may not be an intelligent bunch, but he didn't doubt they could follow a small child's footsteps. After the tension in the air had settled and the Kirilf had finished his supper, he made his way from the tavern across town to his house. This walk felt much longer than the one on the way to the tavern. He frequently looked over his shoulders, and his ears were pricked constantly as if waiting for a faint sound. The mist clung to the air the same way it had for the past few days, still and harmless as fog tended to be. Despite this, he suddenly felt as if there were other things lurking just out of his vision. He could only see through the fog for about five steps in each direction. He picked up the pace ever so slightly, and when he reached his house, he barred the door, fastening all the latches and locking the heavy iron handle. The Kirill felt a fool. He made a living telling stories of ghosts and ghouls to gullible drunks, and now he was buying a story about a carnivorous mist. The next day, the fog continued to loom over town, making him feel a little claustrophobic. As usual, no one came to his shop, 
so he headed to the market. When he arrived, the townsfolk had worked themselves into a frenzy, bickering and pleading to the gods to save their souls. The hunter from the night before had disappeared on the way home from the tavern. It seemed as though whatever had happened to his boy hadn't wanted the news to spread. When he returned home, people were lined up outside, asking him for spells and potions that would protect them from harm. The crew have tried to calm them, sending them home and telling them to lock their doors to wait out the bad weather. He shut himself in his study and began scouring his bookshelves for answers. Everything had an explanation, and if it was supernatural or made for a good ghost story, the Kirilf had it in his library. The sun had only just reached its peak in the sky when he started his search. Not that anyone could have known, considering the density of the fog outside. And his search continued until dark had come and gone. Twice in the night, people had come to his door to tell him of another disappearance and to beg for an arcane solution to their woes. But the Kirilf had no answers. He sent them on their way and got back to reading. He couldn't attribute it to anything mortal. A mortal would leave some trace, and no were-creature would act so subtly. They were all about big and boisterous displays of power. It could only be vampires. His eyes were starting to gloss over from the lack of sleep, but he was the only hope for this town not to be completely destroyed one resident at a time. And then he saw it, the Kirilf clan of Valenwood. This clan could disintegrate into mist, and that was all the information he could find on them. One sentence. This lack of information told him exactly how many survivors they left to tell the tale. He had to act fast. The Kirilf sprung to his feet and made his way from his house. He walked with utmost haste to the markets. Everyone had been there, and they'd all been out in the open. As he walked, the fog grew denser and denser still. It got to the point where the Kruilf couldn't see his outstretched hand as he waved it in front of him. And then he stopped dead in his tracks. His boots sunk into the moist ground and he stared forward at the approaching sound of muffled footsteps. Through the haze, he saw two balls of glowing amber, like small sunbursts piercing through the fog. As they hovered closer, he saw the lights flicker, blinking, and then a pale, delicate face appeared, framing the impossibly bright orange eyes. The form grinned at him, revealing two fangs stained red by a recent kill. He watched, frozen, as a droplet of blood trickled down one of the creature's fangs, and then he dropped the book. And then, the creature was on him. He felt teeth, sharp as daggers, puncture the flesh of his neck, and then he fainted. He awoke in the same place. The fog was gone, and so too were all of the town's inhabitants. The returned sun was an unwelcome guest, as his eyes burned trying to adjust to the brightness. Terror still pulsed through him with every heartbeat, but he was thankful to be alive. He sat up and saw the book he dropped still half submerged in the mud. He picked it up and flicked to the page he'd bookmarked, the vampire clans. In his years of study, the Kirilf had heard of a mage from the College of Winterhold called Falion, who had been an expert on the undead and vampires. He was the Kirilf's only hope to stop him from descending into a bloodthirsty beast. So he headed north and was caught at the border between Cyrodiil and Skyrim. After escaping Helgen, and after his long and arduous journey across Tamriel, the Kirilf will be a shell of his former civilized self. Originally, he had hoped to reach Skyrim in time to find a cure, but by now little remains of him that isn't corrupted by the vampirism. Now he is hungry, and sees no reason why others shouldn't suffer the way he has. He will kill with no remorse, and he will feast on their flesh and wash it down with their blood. There isn't much more to say here for role-playing. He's a vampire who lurks in the haze, and no amount of sympathy will stop him from destroying and devouring any foe. He will also use the mortals he kills as his thralls to help him kill even more. As for factions, he will join the Volkar clan in the Dawnguard DLC. He'll also join the Dark Brotherhood to put his skill of lurking in the mist to good use as an assassin. You can do the Thieves Guild questline due to your innate stealthiness, and the College of Winterhold will really help improve this amateur mage's magic knowledge. You can also do the main story in the Dragonborn DLC if you wish for the powers associated. Plus, shouts like Soltair, Bendwill, and maybe Become Ethereal are quite fun additions to the build's playstyle, so getting these could be worthwhile. Now that we know the Kirilf's backstory as well as his roleplaying and factions, let's get into how that'll impact his skills, spells, shouts, perks, and his overall playstyle. The main skills for this build will be Illusion, Conjuration, Light Armor, Sneak, and our new addition, Enchanting. Before we look at the specific perks to take from each skill, these are the spells and shouts you'll want to acquire as soon as possible. The Illusion spells to take will be Frenzy, Pacify, and Invisibility. Until you can learn Invisibility, Muffle is a viable alternative to keep you stealthy. Just don't get seen. As for Conjuration spells, get Dead Frawl, Dread Zombie, and any other reanimation spells you can. Then grab Soul Trap. Use shouts like Soltair, Bendwill, and if you want to nail the Kirilf aesthetic, also grab Become Ethereal. But with those outlined, let's move on to the Kirilf's essential perks. 
First up, we have Illusion, and the Kruilf has dabbled in this school of magic for as long as he can remember. And let's not forget that for a vampire who disintegrates and coalesces his form with the mist, he must be an expert in this field. Go for absolutely everything except for Master Illusion. Quiet casting will stop both your Illusion and Conjuration spells from giving away your position, while Hypnotic Gaze and Rage will allow Frenzy and Pacify to work on higher level opponents. Next up, we have the other school of Magicka. If killing a foe and feasting on its still warm corpse wasn't enough disrespect to the dead, reanimating it and forcing it to serve its killer surely is. The Kruilf is not shy about using these talents and doesn't feel one more of sympathy for those he ambushes from the fog. From the Conjuration skill tree, we suggest going for the third branch up to Twin Souls, and then the entire right hand branch. Necromancy will allow your reanimated servants to live for longer durations, while Dark Souls will make sure they have enough health to be useful for the whole duration. And with Twin Souls, you can keep two undead puppets at your side at the same time. The Kruilf may be more of an ethereal monstrosity than a Bosmer at this point, but he can still dress in the style of the natives of Valenwood. The Kruilf will be garbed in rows of intimidating animal teeth and furs, complete with stag antlers to really drive home the fact that he's more beast than myrrh. From the light armor skill tree, take the lot. With custom and matching fit, you'll get a total of 50% armor bonus simply by wearing a full set of matching light armor. The Kruilf clan are one with the mist. What may look like bad weather rolling in over the hills could actually be one of these demons seeking a new victim. The Kruilf is no exception and prides himself in his ability to simply disappear. Even the most eagle-eyed archer will be looking about frantically when the Kruilf vanishes into thin air. From the sneak skill tree, we recommend going for every Everything. Assassin's Blade will make your sneak attacks with the dagger 15 times stronger, and with Shadow Warrior, you can constantly force your enemies to lose sight of you, giving you endless opportunities to deal deadly dagger blows. Lastly, we have our new addition, Enchanting. This one's simple, it'll turn your regular old Forsworn armor into incredibly valuable arcane attire. From this skill tree, take the middle branch all the way to the top. Extra effect will allow you to put two enchantments on each of your items, adding a ton of magicka cost reduction to your gear. And there are all of the relevant skills, spells, shouts, and perks you should take. With those in mind, this is how the Kruilf will play. The Kruilf will use invisibility to hide in the shadows. From here he can use necromancy spells to raise the dead to fight for him. In this confusion he'll be just about impossible to detect. There happens to be a lack of corpses lying around, the Kruilf can make them with his dragonbone dagger, sneaking in and executing devastating sneak attacks. These sneak attacks also work for stealthily infiltrating locations, without your zombies causing too much of a fuss. Also, while hidden in the mist you can cast pacify or frenzy to control the action from the side lines. As for gear, now that we have enchanting, the best choice is a full set of Forsworn armor. This will really encapsulate the Bosma cannibalism aesthetic, and will be really beefed up by your enchantments. But until your enchanting is good enough, the armor of the old gods from the Forsworn conspiracy quest is neat looking and a useful alternative. Along with this, wear Namira's ring so that you can feast on your kills, and then a necklace for you to enchant. On the chest piece, the headpiece, and the necklace, use the Fortify Illusion and Fortify Conjuration enchantments. On the boots and gauntlets, use something of your choice along with Fortify Sneak. But keep in mind that Fortify One-Handed does not help with daggers. Your weapon, aside from your spells of course, will be the Dragonbone Dagger, enchanted with Absorb Health and Soul Trap. You can use Fiery Soul Trap, but it doesn't really suit the roleplaying of this build. And there you have it guys, subscribe to the channel if you're new to Fudge Muppet, and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description to help you navigate throughout the video. Also in the description you can find links to our social media accounts where you can follow us and interact with us directly. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I've been Drew, and I look forward to nerding out with you again in the next one.